Merry Christmas, everybody. It's your boy, Big Truck Series Review, and this is a review on the HP 15-inch um, F039WM computer. I'm guessing the WM must stand for Walmart, as that's where I purchased this computer from, and this computer was a gift. This computer contains a Celeron processor. Um, it's in 2830, and it has 4 gigabytes of RAM. Now, it comes naturally with, you know, the average normal stuff, like it has Windows 8.1, which just about all computers come with, and it contains a lithium-ion battery. Um, that battery will last up till about two hours, but you can squeeze more energy out of it by using um, energy-saving power modes. Now, the last time I bought um, Walmart budget laptops i did it because i needed something for my employees in order so that they could do basic internet work basically spreadsheets and um you know just basic stuff nothing major no gaming no uh no no advanced projects i just needed microsoft office i needed microsoft office excel and i needed microsoft office word processor simply so that they could make my uh, business letters and they could do things for me and uh basically those computers have been performing perfectly. Now, a lot of people had contacted me, and um, as you can see, this computer has a HDMI port, a SD card slot, it has USB 3.0 ports, there's three of them, and it contains Ethernet. What it doesn't have is a 56K modem, which pretty much no computer has built in anymore in order to save space. But a lot of the people who contacted me were disappointed in this computer. Some of them had purchased it after my video and some of them purchased it before my video. They were disappointed in it because they felt it was too slow. It loaded up too slow. It shut down too slow. It couldn't run most programs. It couldn't do what they were expecting it to do. And I thought I had made it abundantly clear that this computer was only for work, but apparently some people didn't seem to understand that and they still tried to buy a budget computer for their kids and they ended up getting what they thought would be able to run these video games. This is a message specifically to parents. If you're planning on buying one of these budget laptops that has Windows 8.1 or even Windows 7, you really need to make sure that you are not buying them for gaming. If you try to buy a budget laptop for gaming, the most you'd possibly be able to play is Facebook games, which use internet protocols like Java and Flash in order to run themselves, like Farmville and, and uh, what else, Candy Crush, and all that stuff will run fine on these computers. Uh, slot Mania, those will run fine. But what you cannot do is have your kid try to buy you one of these computers to play Call of Duty Ghosts or Black Ops. Or, or to run Far Cry, or to run Crisis, or to run uh, Age of Conquest, Oblivion. You cannot buy this computer to run brand new PC games. If your kid wants PC gaming, you're gonna spin deep. And when I mean deep, you're gonna be looking for nothing less than a core i5 Intel processor with uh, NVIDIA gaming mobile processor for graphics. This computer is for work, and work only. As you can see, I'm setting up Windows 8.1 on it. The express settings are there because this system is so convoluted that most people who are brand new computers uh, to brand new to using Windows, they have a hard time using this. The Windows 8.1 is in a very convoluted way. Um, I know traditionalists who have a lot of problem using it. So basically it sets itself up. Um, in the older days, you used to be able to easily go to custom setup and download drivers for video cards and this, that, and other, but now it's a lot more convoluted. The security features that are in this system are right up in your face, and uh, it's not a very friendly system to newcomers. That's part of the reason why Apple sells a lot of its products with iOS and OS X, and it's easier for newcomers to those systems because those systems are very, very straightforward and simple. Some people complain that it's too simple, but the market is always right, and apparently DJs and video editors love Apple. But once again, this computer is not for gaming. This computer is not for graphic design. These computers are not for video editing. 
the video editing that I'm able to do on the 64-bit processor on my iPhone 6 Plus does a better job at video editing than this computer could possibly do because the processor in this computer is just not that fast. I don't know how many times I can say it, but I need you to understand, this computer is for work only. You have to add Microsoft Office to it, and it's for work. Last time I did a review about um, Hewlett Packard laptop budget models that I had purchased from Walmart, it was um, when I purchased two Hewlett Packard 15 G0 19WMs. Now, the problem with these computers is these computers are made to hit a price point. Usually, they will be $300 or less. They'll be sold for $298 at Walmart. And when they first come out, they may be a little bit higher. They may be closer to 400, but usually they're gonna be about 300 or less. Now, the review that I did on those um, laptops, a lot of people watched the review and there were a lot of people who complained to me that they had um, purchased the same computer and then they came online looking for information as to why it ran so slow. So first of all, there's the specs. This computer uses a Celeron N2830 processor. Celeron processors are pretty much recognized as being shit. Then, on top of that, this computer runs Windows 8.1, and it only has four gigabytes of RAM. In addition to having a relatively slow processor, it has only four gigabytes of RAM. Now, a lot of people argue back and forth with me because they don't like the fact that I've come out so strongly against Windows 8 and Windows 8.1. The Advantage to Windows 8.1 over Windows 8 is that right here you see that they've returned the start button. The problem is when you click, left click on the start button, people who are traditional Windows users expect the start button to show you a menu about, you know, shut down, restart, etc., etc. Problem is with Windows 8, what they did was they bring this shit into play, this what they call the um, uh, charms bar where you see all your apps. And they tried to make Windows 8 look just like a Windows phone. I personally avoid Windows phones because I don't like the Windows 8 look or the operating system. I feel that it tries to copy off of Apple's iOS, and on top of that, I feel that it's poorly done. These tiles, for instance, they are meant to give you quick access to things that you have online. Like, for instance, your mail, any mail account you set up is supposed to give you quick access there. You're supposed to have quick access to sports. You're supposed to have quick access to the weather for your local area. Yeah, all of that sounds good in theory. The problem is the execution of it is horrible in Windows 8 because they've layered this Metro interface on top of what should have been the traditional Windows operating system. If they had left the traditional operating system alone and then maybe added a button on here, like the Windows 8 button, if they had left the traditional operating system alone and used this button to bring you back and forth, like basically what it does, if they had left the start bar there and they had allowed you to use this button to bring you back and forth to Metro, then it would be a little bit more familiar for people who've been used to Windows XP and used to people, you know, people who had used Vista and Windows, all the Windows up until Windows 8, which they should have never changed the traditional operating system. Now, there's also these shortcuts, like if you hold this button, the Windows button, and then you push C, you're supposed to bring up the charms bar on the side. And I don't know what fucking moron would have put it on the right side instead of putting it on the left side. I'm not right-handed and I never will be. Why did you put it on the right? Put it on the left, idiot. Whoever is working at Microsoft who's doing this and damaging Microsoft product and making Xbox One, uh, making the friend system on Xbox One suck, I, I just want that person fired and I want them fired immediately and I want them stripped of their pension and I want to make it so they never work for another computer company again. Unfortunately, they have nearly ruined the PC reputation by putting Windows 8 out there. And this is a mainstream operating system. That would be like iOS saying, oh yeah, you know what? We're gonna change everything about iOS and we're not gonna tell anybody until they download it. So when they wake up with iOS 9.0, everything's gonna be completely different. Guess what? All of the people who've learned how to use iOS up until this point and love iOS would be completely alienated. That's why you don't do that. Now, some of these things make sense, but the problem is the traditional Windows user 
has to read and study and do all this and that when they shouldn't have to. Like for instance, when you click on the Windows bar, you get this. However, what I really wanted was to get here where it says my documents, my computer, my folders, this, that, and other downloads. When you click on this, it brings you to where you're looking to be. So why should I have to click on that? What if I didn't use Windows 7? What if I just upgraded from Windows XP? Or what if I've been used to using Windows Vista? Why do I have to know about this and you don't even give me like a crash course in it as soon as the computer starts up just so I know what I'm looking for? Windows 8 is so convoluted that they really need a help button that automatically takes you back and forth to a crash course and they, they might as well entitle it, where can I find the shit that I'm looking for? So in any event, your downloads go here, obviously. Your pictures get stored here, your videos get stored here. That's all fine and good, but I wasn't expecting it to be in this button. I was expecting it to be here. So. This takes you back and forth to the Metro interface. In order to get the traditional start menu, they changed it so that you have to push right click. And when you push right click, then it shows you shut down or sign out, restart, shut down, sleep. Then it shows you the things that you were really expecting to be a left click. That's one of my main disappointments with Windows 8. Now. When you get beyond the cosmetics, and this is for you people who love to argue with me, because frankly, I don't care if you want to argue with me or not. The simple fact is the videos that I'm putting out, a lot of people are agreeing with me. And not only that, because they're on YouTube and they're monetized, they're making a lot of money. So whether you agree with me or not, the market has already spoken. Your opinion is irrelevant. My opinion is money. So in any event, the Metro interface here, when you left click on that, Metro interface takes you here. Then, if you have a uh, pad, you can actually slide. Some touch pads allow you to use multi-touch in order to slide. Like if you use multi-touch, you can slide back and forth the menu like that with the multi-touch. They obviously copying off of Apple, but didn't do a great job of it because the problem is their touch system is not as sensitive as iOS's, and it has a harder time distinguishing between you know two fingers, three fingers, one finger, etc. Now, what Windows did was they they did include a search bar right here, so there is now a search bar which there should have been in the first place. And when you click on that, the search bar allows you to search for programs that are on the computer. So if I search for let's say um, let's say uh, Word, Microsoft Word, WordPad comes up. Now this is another criticism that I have, but it's not a criticism against Windows 8.1, or maybe it should be. Windows knows that the vast majority of people who are still buying PCs need Microsoft Office. They need usually three programs. They need Microsoft Excel, they need Microsoft Word, and they need Microsoft PowerPoint. Even if I had to pay more money to buy those programs of Microsoft Office already pre-installed into the computer, it would be worth it to get me to pay that much money up front out of the box. Now the problem is most P, you know, the companies wouldn't install those programs right into their computers after the computer's already built, which would mean in my opinion that they need to install Word, Excel, or some basic version of Microsoft Office into their Windows system. So if I type Microsoft Office, they know it's gonna come up. So when you click Microsoft Office, let's see what happens. What they're trying to do is because they're sick and tired of the Chinese ripping this country off and stealing our products and copyright counterfeiting them, what they did was they made it so that Microsoft Office is now purchasable online and it gets downloaded from an online server. Basically it's downloadable content, DLC. So when you buy it, the last time I purchased it, what I did was I actually got the card from uh, Best Buy or Walmart, I can't even remember. And when you buy it, you pay the money through the computer and it downloads directly to the computer. So for those people who may be looking for a computer who don't usually buy computers, what I'm gonna tell you up front is, none of these computers come with Microsoft Office installed. But if you do purchase the computer, Microsoft Office can be downloaded as downloadable content directly from the internet. So, you know, if you're buying this for a kid or a student, you're good, no problem. So when you buy it, it downloads straight into the computer, and once it's in the computer, you've got it for good. 
or for whatever the trial period like they offer you a try it period so that you can jump on immediately problem is if you're a student you don't want a trial period you're gonna be in school for four years minimum so you're gonna need to buy this it's about eighty dollars I think higher expensive versions are like a hundred dollars or whatever I argue that they should have basic versions installed already so that you can view read edit Microsoft Office documents that's my argument the last thing I'm gonna say about this computer is about gaming a lot of people ask me oh well can these computers run games I'm gonna tell you right now if you're trying to run games on a $300 laptop that you bought from Walmart you are wasting your time in fact laptops are really not good for gaming it's better to buy a desktop computer because when you want to change a component and upgrade a component, it's easier to do so. I have a cousin right now who's attempting to sell a custom built, um, I, I can't remember who made it, but he bought a custom built Core i7 and it had great specs and everything, but the, I guess eventually he got tired of it and he wanted something newer. Unless you're building a top-notch laptop and you're willing to pay two or even three thousand dollars for it, laptops are not great for gaming. If you're determined to buy one, then you know Alienware has options and everything. But you'll notice that they're way more expensive than a desktop computer. In my opinion, you're better off gaming on a Nintendo DS or a Sony PSP, and save computer gaming for desktop, where you can buy yourself a video card like I have, like a, a GTX with four gigabytes, and you can get yourself a Core i7, and it won't really cost you an arm and a leg. The video card's about $400. This computer, once again, only has four gigabytes of RAM. Now, there's a website called Can You Run It, which um, they call it www.systemrequirementslab.com. This website allows you to check the newest games or even older games and figure out can this computer run it, and it tells you whether or not you can run it and why you can't if you can't. So let's check Far Cry 4. So I'm going to search Far, Far Cry 4, which just came out. Far Cry 4 was a really good game, and I liked it on Xbox One. So Far Cry 4, let's see, can you run it? This system will tell you whether or not you can. Uh, automatic detection I'll use with the Java setup. It says my Java is out of date, so then they start to look fucking bullshit. Okay, so it says um, your download should start with an okay, so I just run the download. You can check any, if you have a computer, it doesn't matter what you got, you're, you can run this system and it will automatically check your computer and find out whether or not you can run it. The HP 15 G019 WM that I purchased for my employees was only for work. It was only to run Microsoft Office. And being that it was only for Microsoft Office, you don't need a fast computer to run Microsoft Office. My argument, however, is that Windows 8.1 and Windows 8 have such high memory requirements while the computer is at idle that unless you have a computer that has 6 gigabytes or 8 gigabytes of RAM available, you're going to have a lot of problems with certain apps. Is that the general rule? Well, no, it depends what program you're using. But my opinion, or I should say that I think for most programs, what you really want to do is you want to have a Core i3 or a Core i5. And if you have a Core i3 or a Core i5, the computer's extra processing power can make up for the fact that you may not have a lot of memory. But I say that you should have at least six gigabytes. In fact, eight gigabytes if you can. My desktop computer has 32 gigabytes of RAM. Let me, let me turn that off. Yeah, I don't want YouTube fucking me. How, how do you push? Where's the mute button? Where's the mute button? Where's the volume button? Oh, here they are. Mute. Volume down, volume up. Mute. Okay. So, as you can see, can you run it? says there's no way in hell you're playing Far Cry on this son of a bitch. It says your computer does not meet the minimum requirements and you can find out why it does not, but the minimum requirements say that you have to have a one gigabyte video card with a one gigabyte of dedicated video memory. This computer does not have that. The CPU that it required would have been a Core i5. 
The CPU speed is obviously too slow. This is a 2.2 gigahertz Celeron, but you need something way more powerful. Usually, nowadays, I think they recommend that you have nothing less than a dual core processor, usually a quad core if you really wanna get the most out of it. I have enough RAM, but if the minimum is four and I meet four, that ain't enough RAM as far as I'm concerned. Everything else the computer's got, the real problem right here is the CPU is too damn slow. Once again, this computer is, is best for people who just need an internet browser or just need to work. Problem is, even Facebook and YouTube will load up slowly if you don't have enough memory and you have a slow processor. So not only is gaming not great on this computer, but on top of that, or I should say not achievable on this computer, but on top of that, a lot of internet apps wouldn't be either. So this computer does not meet those requirements. Let's check a, a old game. Let's check uh, goddamn fucking ads. Okay, wait, let's check an older game. Um, how about, what's an old game? Um, Conquer 3 Tiberium Wars came out many years ago, and once again, this computer does not meet the minimum requirements because of the video card. And it may be that the video card just doesn't have enough memory, but it could also be that it doesn't have um, the drivers required. So it might be possible to update the drivers, but I seriously doubt it because Command & Conquer 3 was a 3D game, and 3D games require 3D acceleration. The CPU, strangely enough, meets the requirements. And uh, Microsoft Office 8 OS doesn't because it can't recognize it for that game. But you get the point. This game, this computer is not good for gaming. This computer is only good for basic internet use, web browsing, and what's called um, uh, Microsoft Office or some very, very, very basic processor programs. If you have any questions about this computer, now that I've actually explained to you that you can't game on it, just let me know in my comment section. I go here. Oh, right click. Mm-hmm. Okay. What do you think about Windows 8? It's really good. Oh, you think it's really good? Okay.